Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Got a question for you. What is the most important part of your station? And if you're saying, well, it's the operator. Yeah, I agree. But what is the most important mechanical thing that makes up your station? Is it that transceiver? Is it a gold-plated microphone? Or how about a nifty paddle from one of those guys in Canada that make them just gorgeous? Um, what, what contributes to the better signal? A bigger amplifier? A better transceiver? All of those add up to a strong signal for sure. But the thing that really makes the difference is the antenna system and specifically the feed line. And this episode is really to address standing wave ratio. There are some talking heads on YouTube who say, SWR doesn't matter. One guy in particular says something to the effect that, ah, if it's 10 to 1, it's 10 to 1, just get on the air. Well, that's a good point. Get on the air. Uh, do the best you can. But do I obsess over standing wave ratio? And the answer is I do. Um, and for a lot of reasons. To answer the initial question, what is the most important part of your station? And that's the feed line. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go to a spreadsheet, which I don't want to do. But it's the only way to show a comparison between different kinds of coax and what happens when the SWR changes. Feed line is critically important. To demonstrate that again, I grabbed no less than four feet of, it's heavy, four feet of coax connectors. And uh, there's approximately 60 here. Uh, this connects to um, one of the many great devices we have available to us today. And uh, that's going into a rig expert to measure um, the return loss. As it turns out, these 60 connectors, four feet long, uh, the total return loss is 0.33 dB. Uh, that is amazing, but not so much. If you figure that, okay, I got four feet and I'm losing X number of dB in that four feet, what's what would it be like if it was 100 feet of coax connectors? Well, the loss would be pushing 10 dB. And in, in that case, not so good. Back to coax. Why is coax so important? And why do, why do I obsess on SWR? Um, first of all, there's a lot of confusion about SWR. And let me point to my own antenna system to give an example. I build a Yagi in the backyard um, and we put it up. And it turns out it was resonant resonant and the SWR was also low above the 20 meter band and the idea of the Yagi was just 20 meters. So some guys will say on the internet that okay it's resonant high so you need to lengthen the elements. That's true and I did and I got the um, uh, SWR uh, 1 to 1 at 14200. But that's not where it was resonant. It was resonant at 14,100. How do I know that? Well, uh, I had the rig expert out. This thing is my go-to device all the time. 
um, it showed where the resistance equaled some number. I think it was around 35 ohms. At 14,100, at 14,200, the SWR was one to one because of reactants. So what I did to make it work was maneuver the elements around again and add a matching device to bring the impedance from about 30, 35 ohms up to 50. So then I had um, the lowest SWR and the resonant frequency of the antenna at about 14,200. Some have said, well, the resonant frequency is just a frequency. Uh, that's true. Uh, so I would measure up and down from that frequency how many kilohertz away from that can I get and I was able to maneuver things around so that it would cover about 200 kilohertz with much less than a 1.5 to 1 or right at a 1.5 to 1 SWR at the edges of, of that excursion. Why 1.5 to 1? Why do I shoot for that? What difference does it make? Um, like the guy said, just get on the air. In his example, he's talking about 80 meters and a feed line that's 10 feet long. Well, heck, anything will, will work there. Also, in some of the videos, they've made comments that um, coax came, up, came about during World War II. That's absolutely not true. Um, look it up. And that's kind of leads to a point, which is if you're going to say things like that, maybe you want to verify the facts. Also, it said that um, uh, hams didn't know what SWR was in the 1950s and 60s. I was around then, and yeah, we sure did. Did we pay much attention to it? A little, but... The availability of an SWR meter was limited until Heathkit came out with one and manufacturers in Japan were making boatloads of, literally, of uh, SWR meters. Back to the point, and we need to look at that darn spreadsheet. Um, I measured the loss on this, and it's 0.33 db which means if it were 100 feet long uh be somewhat less than 10 db which is a lot of loss but you're not going to have this many connectors this is an exaggeration it's a, uh, an aberration uh, to make the point each connector is so small it's lump impedance at some frequency in the hf band doesn't amount to much get to uh gigahertz and not really counts um so you can have a lot of connectors and it's not going to matter much if you have lousy coax it's going to matter bunches the swr is going to look great in fact the swr will go will go down with lousy coax to make the point let's look at the spreadsheet i don't particularly want to do a spreadsheet but um it's the only way that I know I can present the information. So I'm going to put that up on the screen now. All right, so here's the spreadsheet. And I've listed five different kinds of coax. RG174, RG8X, LMR400, 7 8 inch hardline, and 1 and a quarter inch hardline. In all cases, the length is 100 feet. In all cases, the frequency is 28 megahertz. The SWR is going to be different amounts, uh, but basically 10 to 1 and 1.5 and to 1. I picked a power level of 100 watts because it's easy to manipulate from that value to something else if we need it. And so I list uh, the match loss, the SWR loss, the total loss, which is a combination of the match loss and the SWR loss. Uh, this column then expresses the power out. This column, so uh, again, we're dealing with 100 watts, so the math is easy. 
Uh, in this case, um, 14 watts is being radiated. 86% is the loss. So let's go through some of these and we're going to compare um, different standing wave ratios because that really is the point. And as I said, it's something that I do obsess about. Um, let's go down to uh, we'll do 174 first. RG174 with a 10 to 1 SWR. <coughs> RG174 with a 10 to 1 SWR at 28 megahertz, 100 watts. The power radiated is about 14 watts, just in round numbers. If the SWR is down to 1.5, then the power radiated is 64 watts as opposed to 14 watts. So that would be roughly four plus times the power coming out of the coax. Let's look at uh, LMR400. Is, well, let's do RG8X. RG8X is hugely popular. 20 megahertz, 10 to 1, 100 watts. The uh, loss is 86, or sorry, the loss is 66% with 34 watts being radiated when the SWR is 10 to 1. If the SWR is reduced to 1.5 to 1, then the power out is 68 watts. The loss is 32, so roughly half. Let's look at the coax that I use and that is a 0.875 inch, 100 watts, 20 megahertz, different standing wave ratios, 100 watts. There's very little loss um, at the feed point. So in this case, the power output is, and here's the power output, is uh, 82 watts with a loss of 18. If you go to a 3 to 1 SWR instead of 10 to 1, the loss is 7%. If you have a 1.5 to 1 SWR, the loss is just 3%. Well, wait a second. Why is that so different from like uh, RG174 or even LMR400? The answer is the uh, 7 8 inch hard line has very little loss. It's a little bit like a ladder line. Alright, let's take a look at this chart that I drew. And what I'm attempting to show is in the first three bars, the SWR of 10 to 1. The second three bars are an SWR of 1.5 to 1. Listed are three sizes of coax. Roughly one inch, LMR400, which is 0.4 inches, and RG8X. And just look at these efficiencies. When the SWR is 10 to 1, the one inch coax is still pretty efficient at better than 80%. LMR400, not as good. RG8X is really lossy. Now, if we get the SWR down, which is the premise of this video, to 1.5 to 1, then, again, the 1-inch coax is very efficient. The LMR400, its efficiency increases. You can see that second bar for, uh, in the middle on both sides is up quite a bit on the right hand side where the SWR is 1.5 to 1. If you go to RG8X and you look at the efficiency which is lousy at 10 to 1 is acceptable in some cases um, especially in a POTA situation where the SWR is 1.5 to 1. So 
the next time somebody says SWR doesn't matter, think of these bars and how tall the diameter, the larger diameter coax, how tall those bars bars are. <laughs> and the, the lossy coax has much less efficiency. Now, also keep in mind, and many manufacturers know this better than we do, with really lossy coax, the SWR looks better than it is. Sometimes, many times, better than it is. It could be 10 to 1 at the antenna, and at the other end of the coax, look like 2 to 1. And the manufacturer can say, well, it's got a 2 to 1 SWR, so it must be good. Not really. Again, look at these bars. See why one group is taller than the other. has to do with SWR and the kind of coax. Please... Do subscribe. Do me the favor of doing that um, as I'm approaching the um, difficult situation. Anyway, um, uh, if you can do that and uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, would be most appreciated. I am Jim W6LG in Rockland, California, saying the size of your coax matters. 73.